screen here. Just all face. <laughs> All right, good evening, everyone. Welcome to Connect with Carrie here on Saturday, the first Saturday of May. Are we the first Saturday of May? Second Saturday. No, first Saturday of May. Look at that. Half the year is almost gone, just like that. So, welcome everyone to the show. Um, last week, I did not air a show, but I was there last week. And you guys have been phenomenal. This is my season four of the show, and I just have to say thank you to everyone who does tune in weekly to the shows. Usually, you know, we've been getting somewhere over 90,000 to my last show was 106,000, I believe. And then, of course, my connected uh, culture connection on Tuesday nights with Big Wall last week. We had, or not last week, the week before. I keep thinking because last week was Easter, you know, like, or two weeks ago, but like Easter, so we missed shows. But anyway, we had about a half a million tune in to our virtual concert that night. So it was amazing. So everyone, thank you, thank you, thank you. And then, of course, a quick happy Mother's Day to all the wonderful mothers out there for tomorrow. So there's our May catch up. Welcome to the show, Rain, Rain Schemes. Yes, how you doing? You know, it's, it's, <laughs> it's, 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 it's Rhyme Schemes. You know, I got to be difficult and put, you know, spell it all in German and stuff like that, but it has rhyme schemes and uh, pretty much the name tells who I am, you know. Bunch of schemey rhymes, that's all. It could be, yeah, scheming the rhymes. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for joining us. He's all the way from LA tonight. So you guys are probably having some incredible weather. We are having a bit of rain here in Calgary. It hasn't been too bad the past couple days. It's actually been kind of nice a little bit of rainy and whatever not like la la you guys get like hot sun all the time and then sometimes you'll get rain but it's not that often <laughs> rain is like a commodity over here it's like uh you remember the song it never rains in southern california this that's true you know mm -hmm. i never see rain and, I'm, and i get mad at it like uh-uh why is it raining <laughs> <laughs> this little cloud that just floats along and then all of a sudden it's like mm, I want to rain. No, I'll keep moving along, right? Yeah, just go to Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> that is so funny. I have to say um, thank you for being on the show this evening. I know you are a very, very busy artist, and I know that you have been very busy getting, like, your, I think you have a new album coming out. You've got some new releases that have just been out. You've been all over the map, so I know, like, you are very, very busy, so thank you for being on the show this evening here as well on Just TV, Just FM. I just have to say thank you first because it's very important, to, you know, for my guests to understand that I know what it's like when you're very busy and, you, and you're going to be traveling soon as well. So it's like almost impossible to hold you down. <laughs> thank you, <laughs> so thank you as well, yeah. Yeah, so I really do appreciate all your time and energy for being here, first of all. So I just have to quickly clear that up. Now, going back to your name, Reem, Rhyme Schemes, I was going to say Reem again, <laughs> Rhyme Schemes, how did you come up with that, and when did you come up with that? So, you know, the, the funny thing about it, it was spelled properly before, it was spelled Rhyme, how you spell Rhyme, the R-H-Y-M-E, yeah. um, and, you know, I, I wanted to be a little bit different, so Rhyme Schemes came from um, a long time ago when I first started doing music, um, and the way I used to put my music together, it was technical like the a b a b format like how you write a poem a rhyme scheme and yeah. uh so i started rapping and stuff like that when i was in the military actually it was crazy i started rapping and i was in the military i spent about 16 months in iraq and wow. the guy I'm, it was you know you get people from every all walks of life in the military you know you got people from texas and you know uh chicago new york all these different places and these guys are like super talented and they would just get they would just get me to like rhyme. And I'm like, you know, I was their sergeant. And they was like, come on, come on, come on, hit us with the rhyme schemes. Come on, hit the rhyme. And then I started rapping with them. And that's eventually how I got the name Rhyme Schemes. Um, and then later on, you know, I started traveling internationally doing music and stuff like that to give a quick synopsis. That's how I changed the name to Rhyme Schemes, which is kind of like the German form of like rhyme. And I just added my little E on the end of the rhyme. And that's how you got the Rhyme Schemes name. Uh, yeah, that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Wow, you were in the military. How long were you in the military for? Uh, six years. Yeah. Six years. Well, 
I'm not from the States, but thank you for your service anyway. I do appreciate that because I know depending on your circumstances down there, you can be in the line of fire within a heartbeat. So thank you for putting your life on the line. That's just incredible. What was it like? You must have, like, that must be such an experience. You, you know, I, I've always been an adventurous person. So, you know, the funny thing about it is I wanted to go to the military straight out of like grade 12. And what happened was my mom was like, no, you're not going to the military. You're not going, you're going to university. So I went to, I went to university and I, and, I, and I played sports. You know, I was a track track runner, got a track scholarship to play, uh, run track. And then okay. after I graduated university, I'm sitting here with a whole university. I'm sitting there, you know, at a job I was working. And just one day I said, I'm going to join the military. And I just like quit my job and I ended up in Iraq like six, six months later. And, and that was the start. It, that was the start of everything. You know, what was started me doing music. That was the start of me, you know, just developing as a person internationally and just actually put my feet on the ground in different lands. And, and, and I think that was the start of like who I be really, when I really involved as a person, mm -hmm. that was a, probably the best crazy decision I ever made in my life because it takes me all the way to where I'm at today. And it's like a yin and yin and a yang full circle. So wow. it's funny that we bring that up because that's kind of like the, the uh, pivotal point of, you know, my life and who I am. Yeah. Well, that's, you have to get down to the nitty gritty of who an artist really is because it's not, yeah, you make music and that's part of who you are, but there's always the reason why someone started making music or maybe it was in their family or just, you know, there's, like you said, the pivotal moment of when someone starts their career. That moment of just like, you know, I really want to do this and I really have a heart for this and I just, the passion and the drive, but it's always got to start somewhere. So this is why, like, I take these shows and it's not like your regular radio interviews. Like, I like to dig in a little bit deeper and be like, you know, who are you as a person? Who is the face behind the music, right? Because it's just like, you know your average business well who's the business and okay well let's just use mcdonald's for example okay well we all know the golden arches but who started it like who is the actual face behind it right you don't know the whole entire story unless you go and you dig it up right, right. so that takes time to go and do that but here you know this is one thing i love to just find out like who are you you know why why did you bring up music or how did you get involved and what you know, the whole story behind it, because it's not often that you hear about it. Like we'll see your videos posted up on Facebook or your Instagram feed, but you know, you only kind of tell that little bit of a story through, you know, your feed and everything, but you're not going to really hear who you are. Right. Yeah. And so anyone who's watching or listening, I think, you know, they're going to have those points in their lives and they're going to go, Hey, you know, I remember I was in the military or I was in this certain career and I decided to change my career because something happened. Right. And yeah. to be able to be in high school and just be like, okay, I want to join the military. That is a huge step. Like that is just like, you know, taking the grenade and <laughs> just <laughs> throwing yeah. it out there and be like, okay, wherever it lands, let's just go. <laughs> I, you know, I got a funny story about grenades too. I remember when they first told us how to, you know, perfect segue when they was teaching us how to do the third grenade. And I remember like the whole time we were in basic training, we had our, our cups like this. We had to hold them like this every time we, we walked through the, the mess hall. And I didn't realize it was like wax on, wax off. So when we got to the grenade training, this is how you hold a grenade. Like, just oh. like this. And it was funny because the sergeant was like, hey, he's like, hold it. Now throw it in the air. And he's like, hold it. I was like, no, I threw it so fast. I'm like, this thing gonna blow up in my head. So I was like, <laughs> I threw it so fast and ducked down. <laughs> but it, it was just so funny how you know you say that because yeah, that was probably that was probably one of the craziest moments ever, like throwing a grenade for the first time. And knowing it's live, it can blow me up and realizing the Daniel so wax on, wax off moment, you know, it was just cool. <laughs> so you're holding the pin down on a grenade. From the time you release it, how much time do you have? Is it 10 seconds or 30 seconds? Oh, not 30 seconds. No? It's definitely more than 30 seconds. It really? may be less than 30 seconds. Like about 10, it's like 7 to 10 seconds. Yeah. You got to throw that bad baby. So like you could have been dead a million times over. Yeah, basically. <laughs> <laughs> oh 
Yeah, it's definitely. Really for you to be here today. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. I definitely I got some stories. Like we, I'll have this thing. We'll be talking all night. I got some stories for you. I got like an autobiography about right? that. <laughs> That's insane. I just, you know, the thing is, is when you watch movies, like, of course, here in Canada, we have like, you know, the RCMP, but it's not that highly huge training that the military has down in the States, right? Like there's levels of it, but it's not like you guys are just thrown into like the deep end and you, you have to learn how to swim like within boot camp within the first six months or whatever, right? For yeah. us, it's like this long-term kind of training that, you know, I don't think we ever see grenades. <laughs> Honestly, I think it's more horses than anything, but I don't know. <laughs> but this is the thing, like, putting yourself in that situation, you have all that pressure. And it's like, you have to perform under pressure really quickly when you're in the military. So from performing in the military to performing on stage, what has been more frightening to you? You know what, to be honest with you, the music, you know, the music part, performing on stage. Uh, I mean, right now, you know, years in is second nature now, it's nothing to me, but like in the beginning, I used to be, it was almost like stage fright. You remember like Eight Mile, the movie Eight Mile with Eminem, when yeah. he first ran in the washroom and just started throwing up, like, that's the kind of nerves you get performing. I remember because it's like, you love your music, it's so close and dear and, and you know, endearing to you. Yeah. And so like, you want to make sure that everyone likes it because you love it. And it's okay. like, it's like someone telling you, oh, your kid is not cute. And you're like, oh, this is my precious baby. And it's like they're telling you, like, no, that baby's not cute. That would, that would hurt your heart. So it's like getting on stage and they, they boo you. They don't react to you. That's the nerves that you get as, you know, as an artist. You yeah. know, I remember, you know, I don't drink alcohol now, but like years ago when I first started, I used to have a drink to make myself get drunk so I can mm -hmm. like not know what's going on. And then mm -hmm. I used to hope that like, I used to hope like the sound system was bad so they could understand what I was saying. So they just had to give me a pity. You're like, you know. <laughs> This is in the beginning. This is definitely in the beginning. You know, no one knew this stuff like that. I mean, I still, I still rose to the occasion, and I still like, you know, put on good shows in the beginning. But <laughs> these are the thoughts that go through your head, you know, as an artist when you first start off. And mm -hmm. um, when you know, in the military, you know, I had a team with me. You know, yeah. I had this confidence instilled in me where I was able to make things happen. I was in charge, and it was just like that type of mentality, the organization, discipline. You know, you know, that was a little bit different, but the music is just free fall. And it depends on other people's opinion, opposed to like, you know, people are, are being led by me with the same strategies that they've been trained with. So that's the only difference, the pressure, but the pressure still is there. But I think the music is a lot different when you first start off performing. Yeah, sure. that's incredible. I just, you know, it's interesting to see where people's fears are. And a lot of people do have like that stage fright. But then some people are like, oh, it's amazing. They love just the rush of the crowd and they love just, you know, people chanting or singing along with their music or things like that. So it's, you know, kind of neat to see where you fall in that because you said, you know, you're a sergeant or you were a sergeant in the military and you would think with that confidence that it wouldn't even be an issue to be able to go and perform on a stage, you know, but there you have it. And it can happen anytime. <laughs> Yeah, it, it, was, it, it was too much, right? It was crazy. I remember my biggest show I did. Um, it was with an African artist here in LA, like a stadium, and it was crazy. I had a game plan together. I had like my dancers ready. I had all my songs. As soon as they opened that curtain up, and I seen all those people, yeah, like I was pretty much jumping five feet off the ground, pretty much <laughs> at that point. <laughs> Because, wow. you know, the nerves is there and that, that crowd gives you that, it just changes up things and it gives you that extra, that extra energy and stuff like that. And, you know, that, that's, yeah, it's a rush, like a roller coaster ride. Yeah. Do you have a team with your, you know, as being an artist, do you have a team that can help you along your journey or have you been doing a lot of stuff on your own? You know, the, the, the beauty about being educated and, you know, going to university and things like that, it allowed, I, I'm able to incorporate that in my music. So I understand about marketing, you know, target marketing, you know, how to run marketing, you know, how to manage things. So like a lot of my stuff I do is more freelance and contracted, you know, okay. so, so I technically, I, I kind of do have a team. You just kind of like, you know, you just hire people for certain ven ventures and stuff you, you have going on. Yeah. Um, 
pretty much I organize and manage everything myself. So I operate like a business. You know, I have my label GRS Entertainment, and I, I you know, I definitely like, you know, as far as the music distribution to like setting up graphic arts to setting up like everything is just all through me. And then if I need dancers, you know, I'll network with the dancers. You know, uh, if I need producers or I need like engineers or I need recording studios, everything is just organized with me. Um, and so, and I always, and I always tell artists, you, you gotta, you gotta set up a plan. It always has to be a plan from A to Z. You can't just be like, all right, I'm going to put this song out hopefully and just put the song out and just duck like, you know, like a grenade, right? Oh, grenade. <laughs> <laughs> like, no, you gotta, you gotta, because, because with today's world, so many artists trying to do things are so easy to record music. So you have to have a plan. You have to have a plan. You have to have a goal. You got to put, you know, I got to put, you got to put plan, uh, markers in place in order to achieve these goals along the way yeah. um, and you know contingencies if this goal doesn't work so it's, it's the same way life or business is like with the music you know I, I drop a song I'm already in my head you know I know where I'm going to put the song at I know what platform I'm going to target the most I know what countries I'm going to target the most who should I interview with which blogger should I go to you know what show should I go to what tv networks I should present it to like I already got I already got to brainstorm out before I actually, you know, do it. I and mean, if you look at my phone, I have my planner. It's like dates, 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 organized. All right, what's the budget? This and this and that. So it's that's kind of how I operate. Very, very meticulous. Uh, Which is good because I don't think enough artists are business minded about it because it is a business. Like you said, you need to have everything planned out. Especially, you you know, it's just like your goals. Where do you want to begin with with your music? Where do you want to end up? Because you need to plan all those strategies along the way. Like you said, you know, even just a simple interview here and there, which I would have to say thank you for choosing me. <laughs> I'm very, very honored. <laughs> <incredible. laughs> I could see in your plan. So that's super cool. And then we'll go into like the other plan of coming to Calgary, which is that's so cool. Cause I, yeah, we'll get into that in a minute, but. Um, but yeah, just that whole business mindset of it, because enough artists, they're out there going, okay, well, if I throw a song on Spotify, I should do really good. Or if I just use SoundCloud or if I just, you know, whatever, but you need to have those stepping stones of like, okay, you know, start here and work your way up to here and here. What has been probably the hardest thing up to date to manage yourself? Um, it's just, you, you see, when you manage yourself, you have to deal with the ins and outs of the business. So like the good, the bad, the ugly of the business. So, mm -hmm. you know, if let's say you hire someone, like say you hire a, a radio person to put you in rotation, you know, and let's say they're in, I don't know, Germany, you have to like figure out, you have to get follow up on reports to make sure your song is, is, is being played as, as agreed upon, you know, yeah. so you have to do that and you have to, ma you have to manage that type of part. That's the most difficult part because you have to make sure because you can't just be like a label. A label does it all for you. They track it for you. You just be the artist. You do the work. You show up here. You show up there. And they tell you what to do. As an independent person running it yourself, um, I have to follow up these people. So let's say, imagine I'm like, you know, I'm trying to be on 40 different radio stations. I'm following up. I have to get reports. I have to make sure I keep my spreadsheet to say, hey, are these people playing this? Because I need to know. Because if these markets, I need to put more advertising tours to possibly create a show or a tour later on. Yeah. I need to have that information, that data. And so that's the hardest part, just, you know, making sure that you can like get people you can, you can trust that's going to do the business proper and um, always have to follow up. So that's the tough, the music is the easiest part. I can go knock off 12 songs right now. It doesn't even matter. It's yeah. like, okay, this person, they, are they playing my song? Are they really playing my song? I can't sit here on the radio all day and just wait for it to play, you yeah. know, so I have to have reports and data and so it can help me initiate my plan or continue my plan. Yeah. That is very interesting to hear because I have not even heard one single artist say that you are the first one in over on almost two years that I've been doing this. And yes. that is so important. Like you can just, you know, yeah, you can be like, okay, I want a 30 second slot here and there or just be on rotation. But how many people do actually really follow up and make sure that they're being played. Now, when you send me your bio, there was something like 10 stations or something that's playing your music, right? Yeah, and that's a little that's a little outdated, but yeah, it's <laughs> a little bit. It's a lot more than that right now. Um, you know, from like you know, my music has grown a lot. You know, internationally, especially you know in Africa with the fifty four countries, I'm played in probably like twenty countries in Africa. 
um, you know, Germany, Australia, you know, all through the States, um, even in Mexico and South America, you know, I'm still, so it's, imagine having to keep up with all that, but like, you know, so we talk about Africa, let's say they're 12 hours ahead or so, and it's like, you know, they like texting me at like one in the morning, and I'm like, your song is playing, bro, or you got an interview on TV at 3 a.m. your time, and I'm just like waking up, looking crazy on the internet, on the TV, like eyes swollen, but you know, you have to, you have all to part do of it. the game, right? <laughs> yeah. It's how it is. I know I've interviewed people like in France too, and it's just like they're the same thing. And and I always feel so bad because my time slots are fixed, right, on the station. So like my underground radio C platform, I can kind of do it whenever I want over there. But this show and my other show on Tuesday nights are fixed time slots. So it's like I'm hoping and praying that my artists can make it on for those slots. And I'm like, I'm so sorry you have to be up at like 2 a.m. to do a show, you know. But that's what you have to put into it. Like if you're really serious about your music, then you're going to put that time in, which, you know, a lot of artists have to understand, you know. And that's not even just artists. It's an everyday business too like whatever you put in you're going to get out of it for sure um for those of, that are kind of tuning in and listening right now do you want to kind of describe your music style i know we haven't touched upon exactly what you do for music style and um then that way they can understand why you're talking about jamaica and you know we'll kind of get into that yeah you know i'm, I'm rhyme schemes um uh, i started off as a hip-hop artist you know actually a freestyler hip-hop artist you know i kind of told the story about the military right um, and i started off and i worked with a lot of people you know from keith murray you know old school 90 rappers to the loonies you know tupac's brother mo green shakur uh the dog pound i've been on tour with a lot of west coast artists and i started off doing that type of music i worked with the, you know the fat joe's terror squad to you know many many more people and i started off as a hip-hop artist just doing straight hip hop, kind of semi gangster rap. Um, and through, through the year, through my travels, I started to change my music to fusion music. You know, I mix anywhere from Spanish in my music to Swahili in my music. And um, so it has an Afro fusion pop where I would do a song one minute, you hear me rapping in Swahili. And the next minute, you would hear me rapping in Spanish. And, and, and it is just, I love that having that international mind state. So yeah. I just, I consider myself a vessel of the world. You know, I definitely try to understand different cultures. I try to like, I try to put, when I go to a different country, I try to live as the local. I don't want to come as like, oh, this American guy or, you know, this Afro-Caribbean guy. He's yeah. coming, you know, I'm not coming over here looking for American food. I'm going over to, you know, Wells and I'm looking for what they have. Or I'm going yeah. to- Indulge you know, in the culture, culture. When you're there. Yeah. 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 I'm looking for that, you know, when I want to learn. Yeah, that is so cool. Okay, sorry, continue. Yeah, and so like I incorporate a lot of that stuff in my music. Like I, I had a friend I was just talking to about two weeks ago in France, and I got over. To, I was in Amsterdam doing a show, and I said, he said, "Hey man, come over to France." So I just took the little hour flight over to France. He and I put together like a couple of songs. Like I did, a, you know, I did a you know a couple of shows there, and it was just seven years later we're still talking about this experience. You know, just being able to go there, and you know, I got a story about being in France too. Like I had a. It was funny because I go to, I'm going to one of the stores and I, you know, I'm acting like I know French, right? Like the, the lady, the lady looks like me, you know, we're the same color. We look alike. So I'm like, okay, I'm mean, like, I know French. So she's like talking to me and I said, where, you know, I'm thinking to myself, where's your razors at? I think I learned how to say, where's your razor? Because I wanted to shave. Yeah. And she gave me the wrong razor, right? So when I got like, to the hotel, I shaved my whole beard off and I had to be, <laughs> I had to be on like a French like a French TV station later on that day. And like, I got there and I looked so crazy. It was like no beard, no nothing. And I was just like, ah, I'm like <laughs> gave the home alone face. And uh, it was just crazy because it was like, and that's the story I remember this to this day, you know, or Amsterdam, like, you know, when you're in Amsterdam, you partake in what they have in Amsterdam. Yeah. I remember one of my friends and I, we were like, we got stuck in a park for like three hours, just walking in circles. Oh no. Looking, looking for the hotel that we were staying in and it was just like we passed the hotel 50 times and we finally yeah. looked oh maybe there's a gas station right there it was a green neon sign right in my music you know allowed me to have that international flavor because i can actually tell you real stories when i say this stuff it's kind of like stuff that really yeah happens. some i definitely have well i use bits and pieces of experience like if you like the, the most recent song i was talking about you know just i'm talking about scenarios 
Um, and I, and I did that organic, you know, a lot of people, I, you know, interviewing and, yeah. and you know, uh, the people who support me, um, my biggest release to date is called Africa to America. I think we're approaching like maybe 300,000 views to that, that one, and as well as uh Tifa wine, Tifa wine is another one that a lot of people took a lot can, you know, um, a lot of people in the industry, they try to get the big numbers, but you know, I tell a lot of people, don't send, don't send them box to me. You're not going to people who support me with, you know, new music and um stay true to myself while i do it yeah and you have a mixture of music you have soca and reggae and hip-hop you're not into hip-hop as much now though as you're saying right yeah it's more like a smooth i was i was doing an interview in miami like maybe a couple like a month ago and a guy was like you remind me of the we call him the fresh prince and i'm like will smith Somebody was like, and someone was like, yeah, it's like Will Smith and LL Cool J had a baby. <laughs> <laughs> that was Jamaican. <laughs> well, I mean, it's a bit of a compliment, right? Yeah, you know. Yeah, I mean, those are legends, you know. And I'm like, I wasn't rapping like that before. I was taking people's heads off earlier on, but now I'm more like smooth. I'm in a good place. You know, I'm hiking every day, and you know, I'm, yeah, you know, and um, on a you know, it's on a different resume, a different mind state, you know, and that's. Not the music reflect who I am today. I like it. What's been your favorite song to to date that you've done? Oh man, my favorite song. Wow. Um, Book of Rhymes. Book of Rhymes. I actually actually did that with a Canadian artist actually from Toronto, uh, named K Rome. He's a you know he's a dope singer, and Book of Rhymes was just kind of like me talking about my life. Um, you know, I talk about how you know, growing up without parents and stuff like that and, and making it from like growing up in the city of Detroit and making it through that and becoming who I am yeah. through the music, how the music had, my music has been my journey to allow me to like become the successful person or keep this perseverance going on. Mm -hmm. uh, and so Book of Rhymes is one that, you know, made a lot of people cry, you know, uh, a lot of people cry listening to that song because, you know, the melodic you know, the way that K. Ron sings on it and the stuff I'm talking about, you know, it's kind of heartfelt, you know. Yeah. So Book of Rhymes okay. is definitely that that one I like. Okay. Can you give an explanation about the song for those that are listening? Yeah, so Book of Rhymes is this, you know, it just tells about my journey as, as rhyme schemes. And it talks about the struggles of just, it's kind of like a metaphor, struggles of life, but also the struggles in the music or how you just like put all your blood, sweat, and tears inside your Book of Rhymes. A lot of people don't, you know, people get the finished product, but they don't know how you got to this product or why are you even talking about this? Yeah. And that's the reason why, you know, I, I put out the book of rhymes just to be earlier on as an artist, I had an idea of what I thought what artist was supposed to be. So I was just rapping what I thought was cool. But then once I crossed the threshold of who I was, I started pouring out my heart and just talking about real life throughout, yeah. these, throughout my music. I started telling people who I, who I am and I'm going I'm to lay it on the line. I'm going to say whatever I want to say. And it's like, it's liberating, mm -hmm. uh, opposed to just trying to be cool, this cool guy, you know, yeah. you know, and that's, that's, I think that's what a lot of people start off at, these cool guys. They that's do. why I like, I like artists like Drake or Kanye yeah. West, because Drake can tell you some stuff that's going on in, in real time. He'll tell you oh, about yeah. a girl he's thinking. <laughs> you, don't, you don't even have to turn on TV. You can just listen to the radio and then just listen to his latest song and you're like, oh, okay. Then they're caught really? up on everything, right? Dave Cece. Okay, that's Cece did that. Like, okay. <laughs> All right. I got you. <laughs> right. But that's the thing about being an artist. And I think so many, especially male artists, have a hard time being vulnerable about their music and just being like, hey, I'm going to put my heart on my sleeve and I'm going to, you know, tell it like it is and, you know, just say, like, this has been the hardest part in my life. This is what led me to here. Because... They just don't want to let people in. They don't want to have that vulnerability with everyone, which to me, I've seen, like you said, I've seen both ends of the spectrum. And honestly, those that have opened completely up and have been more vulnerable have made the most incredible music ever because it's more relatable to everyone. Because they're like, you know, I've been through that situation or I've been there and I know exactly how it feels. Whereas if you're just like throwing things out there just to rhyme, you yeah. know, you're not going to get very far, right? So yeah. that's connect you know, with the audience. catchy. Maybe it'll be like one hit wonder, maybe. And then that's it. Or your music is only going to last for a year, right? 
And yeah. so going into the industry, you want to be long lasting and you want to be able to have, I think just the variety. I wouldn't say you'd have to be vulnerable with every single song, but I would think like we need some really deep music out there for people to relate to indefinitely, especially over the past couple of years. What has been, what's been the hardest thing over the past couple of years making music? The hardest thing, um, the hardest thing has, well, it's, I would call it the rise and the fall or the backwards, the fall and the rise. You know, I'm going to switch it around <laughs> because, yeah. um, you know, COVID hit and I was able to gain a lot of traction during COVID. A lot of, I realized, I understood as a person that a lot of people are going to be tuning into the internet. They can't go outside. They tune into their phone, social media. So yeah. I, I put a song out called Paradise and Paradise, um, connected with a lot of people. I got actually got a plaque recently from um, RIAA for like 2 million streams for Paradise. Uh, so I'm definitely going to dust my shoulders off on that one. Uh, and the thing, how I did it was I ran a bunch of contests and I did remix contests. I had artists from all around the world sending me verses in to, to do a remix to the Paradise song. And then I had people vote for it online and fans got engaged. And then, you know, we, we gave the guy, the guy who won, he was actually from Canada, from Toronto. Hi. Uh, <laughs> Warzone, and he actually won the Paradise Remix Contest, so he got a distribution deal through my company, which is through Empire, and as well, he got a cash prize for winning the contest, Paradise. So I did that. I made dance videos. I had dance contests. Another guy from Tanzania ended up winning that. Uh, Sammy Tao, he won actually like the, the contest for it, so he did the best dance. Very creative. And so I was able to get that song so much traction. Yeah. Um, I couldn't film a video for it because the singer who was on it, Shady Blue, yeah. she actually lived in UK. I couldn't get the UK to film the video. And eventually I ended up doing a video by myself like two years later out of Miami. Um, do you think you'll do it now? Do you think you'll maybe do a remix or something of it? We're in the talks about it. You know, I, I talked to her recently. I said, hey, I'm going to come over to the UK. We can do this video. And she's like, well, I'm super busy right now. You know, and I said, all right, well, when you let me know, I can make it over to the UK um and you know film the video but once i got that success from paradise everything was going on up client i was ready to like travel and try to do much as i can within the restrictions and i caught covid really bad oh, no. like really really bad so it was kind of like i was rising and then I, it kind of like i fell so i was down for like about a month couldn't i'm a guy who hikes every other day i'm running out know, eat healthy salads i wear masks super like Super you know, regimented. And I caught, I'm like, how did I catch COVID? Like, I'm not around anyone. I'm following the rules. Yeah. You know, um, I even came over, I had, before I caught COVID, I came over to Montreal and I, yeah, I came over to Montreal. I was, I couldn't even leave. The restrictions were so bad. Health Canada was like calling me every day. Like, are you here? Like, so I, I left. I, I didn't want to quarantine for two weeks. I had to leave in Montreal because I couldn't leave the house. Yeah. And, um, so yeah. I caught COVID um, last May, about, this time last May caught COVID and it put me down. And so I realized from that point that, you know, once I survived that, that near death experience, I realized like I need to do things at a thousand percent, you yeah. know, more like, so I'm more focused on physical fitness a lot more than I was before, you know, mental health and not taking things for granted. And, yeah. you know, I, I made the song, um, Showtime. This is like post, you know, post COVID. And I, really put a lot of effort into that and yeah. you know, a lot of effort into the music, you know, and the video. And it's just, I want to, I want to present some different a, a, a version of me who won, who beat Kermit, well, not Kermit, Kermit, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> call it Kermit, uh, COVID. <laughs> well, you know, COVID does things to you. So, you know, I'm a, I got the COVID brain. No, I can't even pronounce his name right. <laughs> that happens. <laughs> So yeah, yeah. That's, 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 that's how cool. sick you were. <laughs> <laughs> Can't even think anymore. I know, right? You, so, but you were, you were in the, how long were you in the military for? Six years. Six years. So do you take that training now, like the physical part and try and get back into that a bit? Or what have you been kind of doing to raise your stamina up from that? I'm, I'm vicious. Before I caught COVID, I was like, you know, running through the mountains, like five miles. We, you know, we hike a lot here in California. So I was running through the mountains five miles, but now it's like, 
it's crazy now. It's like I go like eight miles yeah. and I'm running up these hills and doing like five minute miles. And I think mm-hmm. I'm in better shape now at my age than I was. I was actually in the when I was in the military. Like, well, that's good. Yeah, I'm actually in like a hike LA group on Facebook. <laughs> oh, nice! You I'll gotta go out. <laughs> <laughs> I'll send you the link in the future. Yeah. Like, but I'm, I'm, I'm crazy, man. Like five minute miles. I'm, I'm like ridiculous. Like I'm sometimes like, damn, I need to slow down. Like, <laughs> yeah. So you'll have to make a song about that now. Like, kind of take all these experiences and put it into something. Now I think it'll be interesting to see. Okay, let's talk about coming. Okay, are you touring before you come here, or you're just coming for the event? Um, so right now I got a couple of shows planned right now, um, in June and July, a lot of my, a lot of my local events here in California, like Afrobeat events. So yeah. I have one at the end of this month. Um, and I have a couple in June, um, uh, and then I have the event in Calgary, you know, uh, it's actually a puff, it's called puff puff pass tour. It's like, uh, so it's a cannabis event from July 15th through the 17th. And so I'm definitely excited about, you know, coming back to Canada, you know, coming to Calgary. I've been to Calgary like since 2012. So I'm just excited. You know, I want to get my ketchup chips. <laughs> my I don't know if you guys still have flakies over there. Like <laughs> That might be an Ontario thing. <laughs> I don't know flakies, but the old Dutch ketchup chips are. Yeah. yeah. And my Tim Hortons coffee, you know, I got, I got to order my Tim Hortons off of Amazon, you know, like, I, you know, when I get that, I'm a Tim Hortons myself to death. <laughs> we'll get you an IV bag full of your favorite Tim Hortons. I, like, literally have, like, Tim Hortons coffee in my fridge, like, all the time. And then, you know, because of inflation, it's actually gone up. So I just went to, like, Walmart the other day, and I bought, like, this huge box of just, like, French vanilla cappuccino I can make at home. <laughs> yeah. Timmy's is Timmy's. Right? Like, you just you got to have it. So I got a whole can in there right now, like, that I ordered from Amazon. I'm like, every morning, I'm like, where are you? Where are you? Where are you? Where are you? Like, where you get this coffee from? Uh, I ordered it. <laughs> You'll have to write, like, a song about your Canadian experiences, if you haven't already. Oh, yeah. I, I need to. Yeah. I, I spent a lot of time in Canada, especially uh, my earlier years. Uh, spent more, more in Ontario. Yeah. Um, I, I have a grandparent that actually lives in Toronto still one of my grandparents so I definitely spent a lot of time in you know Canada and yeah um called it my second home you know so definitely a lot of friends a lot of family a lot of loved ones so I love being back over there that's good do they does everyone support your music too have they kind of jumped into what you're doing you know what yes like now like my grandmother's like one of my biggest fans you know uh She's like, she tell me stuff about me. She's like, you did this. And see, I was like, oh, how you see this? She's like, you did this, you did that. And I saw you and you was walking down the street in Africa. And I'm like, lady, you're like 85 years old. How do you, how do you know all this stuff? Then she sent me a text message, LOL. I'm like, LOL. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, you 85, how do you know LOL? And she, she's on it. She, she shows all my music to her friends and stuff like that. And uh, yeah, so my grandmother is definitely one of the biggest supporters. Uh, my, you know, my family definitely likes the yeah. stuff I'm doing. My daughter, like I have a daughter and my daughter is like, she's with me all the time. And she's, she's with me when I'm writing the music. So she knows the music before anyone else knows it. You know, she's yeah. like, Can I ask how, old, how old is she? She's seven. seven. Yeah. Yeah. She's seven. So she's with me when I'm writing the music. She knows every single line of everything. Like, cause she's like hearing me recite it and practice it before I go to the studio. Yeah. And she's like, so I play it and she knows it. Like she knows everything that I listen to. So it's it's yeah. it's funny. It's like I'm not trying to make you a musician, but <laughs> has she contributed to your music? Like has she given you any any ideas or has she given any rhymes? Has she She well she's 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 an inspiration. It, it, you know what's funny? Because I have two daughters actually, you know, and my one daughter is getting ready to graduate university. I know I don't look like I should have a you know, I started at university, but She's getting ready to graduate, graduate university. Um, she's down in the, she's in the state. She's in, in the state of Alabama. Okay. Um, and so it's just so funny. Like I, I had that experience and then a million years later, I had this other kid and I'm like, okay, what's going on? You know? So it's, it's a different, it's a different process right now. It's kind of like 
it's like now I understand what being a father is. I'm, I'm in it, and like then I was just winging it. Now I know what to do. Yeah, so it's, it's different it's generations like, too, right? Like that gap is different generations. Like there's a huge difference between college age to the young ones now, like how much they know and what's changed in between those years. Like it's all yeah. oh, different, like a, a million lifetimes. Yes, I'm talking to an adult on one end that's calling me about finances all the time. And <laughs> I'm talking to a little one who just wants to get McDonald's. <laughs> <laughs> And then I'm like, but she, yes, yeah, it is my inspiration because I felt like when my daughter was born, you know, yeah, I was like, oh, I got a rebirth. I felt like I was reborn. It was, it was, you know, I don't want to sound, cor- well, I'm sound corny. I'll sound corny for my kid. Be as but, corny uh, as you want. Yeah, you know, yeah. that's because it was- it's you, right? It's, you know, they're part of your world. They're part of your music in some type of an aspect. And so it's important to be able to be proud of who you are and be proud of your children because they are, they, they make you right. Yeah. It, it felt, I don't know what it, what it was. It was like something about this time around. It was just like, Oh man, like I, I love this. This is fun. Like I'm, I got another human that's he looks like me and it's right next to me. And it's, you know, yeah, it's just so fun. Like, so I get separation when I go on tour, I leave the country. I go on, like, I get separation anxiety for my kid and stuff like that. I'd be like, Oh, I don't want to leave. I don't want to leave. You know, but they're paying you ten thousand dollars. I don't want to leave. You know, <laughs> well, it's <laughs> FaceTime, right? Yeah. There's yeah. all the technology, which is so great. So. Yeah. so that's the tough part. It's like so hard. I'd be like, oh, like I just came back from uh, Mexico not too long ago. Like I think about the next about a month ago, I came back from Mexico, and I was just like constantly calling my kid, like, hey, what you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? And it's like I'm supposed to be over here enjoying myself in Mexico doing this media tour, and it's like, no, it's yeah. like. So. She's like, um, Dad, can you stop calling me? <laughs> yeah, I'll try to play. I'll try to play Fortnite. You know, <laughs> I can't be on your Dad, get off my screen. <laughs> Actually, no. I now what's great is though, like, because iPhones, if you have an iPhone, they're great because then you can <clears throat> FaceTime and play your games at once. So she wouldn't be missing out. <laughs> yeah, so that's 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 cool. That's kind of like the most important. You know, I I, I say like. That's the one of the most important things I accomplished, I would say, you know, having kids, you know, I think that's the most important thing I accomplished. Um, you know, I got, I went to university, you know, I got like two master's degrees, like I traveled the world, but like, no, it's nothing like being a dad, like, besides all this music stuff, you can, you can do platinum album. And I think just being a dad is like the most, I guess, I guess that's my greatest reward, you know, yeah. it's like, for sure. That's- that is amazing. I'm glad. I'm glad that you're able to embrace it all and just bring it all in and just enjoy the moments because it's they grow up way too fast and then before we know it, you know, they're gonna have children of their own and then Woo! <laughs> <laughs> you don't know what you think about those days, but yeah. you know, it creeps up on you. So um we'll wrap up soon, but I wanna see if you'll do a little freestyle for us a little something yeah i mean what we gonna, so th- this is how we're gonna do it this is how we're okay. gonna do it i'm gonna make it fun okay every word that you say i'm gonna do a rhyme to it to show you that i'm actually really freestyling <laughs> i don't even know i want to say tim hortons <laughs> tim hortons i like to drink it every day i don't play I'm looking for my flaky cakes, trying to go to Canada next to the Maple Leaf. Connected with Kari, baby, on this TV. Stream yard all day long with your boy, JessFM.ca. We don't do it every day. I'm Liberty Desivation, coming with my captivating every time as I spit in this freestyle. I'm just never rating, waiting for my next word from Kari all day. My vaya por la casa, tu siempre we don't play. My boy, va casa contigo, te sabes rapiano, improvisando, tu sabes lo cosa que está capando, yeah. And then I flip it back to English because it's real. Verbalizing on this track because I got mad. Skills. I can rap without a curse word, but I speak profanity all day long. You know, my whole flow is manly every time I spit it from the California IA. Rapping on my shirt, you shorter than a mini skirt. Every time I make it work, I make it hurt like surgery. The urgency every time they get to me, but I'm still swerving. See through the traffic. That's evasion to captivating every time I spit it. Everything with my boots be lacing like a soldier in war, trying to spit it hardcore. I rap it like this. What the reason we do it for? <laughs> <laughs> Hey. That was a freestyle. I was making us stuff. <laughs> there you have it, right here, live. 
it's not often people can just do that. It's, yeah. it is, it's really hard. And I, you know, appreciate it. That's so cool. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay, that so was fun. Up, what's that? That was fun. <laughs> it is fun. I love, I love having guests on my shows and it's just like, I want everyone to be themselves. And I just want to be like, okay, let's just have it out and have some fun and just kind of play around with it because you know, it's too often we're so formal on things and this and that. And it's like, you know, nah, I'm done with those. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Come over and have some fun. That's what it's about. Right. So I appreciate you coming on this evening. It has been such a pleasure and such a delight. Um, before you go, mm -hmm. usual, where everyone can find you, you know, the spiel. Yeah, definitely. Follow follow your pitch, if you will. <laughs> Everywhere. I can do it in English or Spanish. Me puede encontrar aquí en Remy Scheme. You know, I'll just play it. I'll do it in English. <laughs> uh, Rhyme Schemes, um, R-E-I-M-E-S-C-H-E-M-E-S. -E -E that's on all platforms. You know, I definitely have my website, Rhyme Schemes Biz. Uh, you can get all my information, you know, as far as, like, music. You get that first on the website. You know, tour information, giveaways. I got the merchandise. RhymeSchemesBiz.com and definitely check me out, you know, and it's not all about music. You see on the interview, we talked about everything. So yeah. you want to hit up Rhyme Schemes about the latest politics in Ukraine, hit me up. You know, you want to talk about what's going on in the Republic of Georgia, hit me up. I mean, I can be a little bit of a nerd. So definitely. <laughs> so yeah, much love to everybody tuning in, man. Much love to you for having me on here. Much love to Jess FM, man. And this is super fun. You're very welcome. I would love to have you back. Actually, I would love to have you back on my other show. Culture connection, because um, it's really fun. I have my other host with me, and then we do like, like I said, we'll do virtual concerts and things like that. So I think we'll have you back in a little bit because that'll be really fun. And then I'll look forward to you coming up here in July. Yes, in July. Keep me posted on that. And then what I'll do is, if you want me to share it up, I can share it up as well, and then we can kind of play around with that as well. So you have a little bit more promotion for that as well. Definitely. Merci beaucoup. <laughs> <You're not. laughs> right. Well, thank you again to everyone for tuning in this evening. You guys are amazing. And um, please make sure you guys do tune in on Tuesday evening for the Culture Connection with myself and Big Well. Ryan Schemes, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're amazing. And everyone that tunes into Just FM, Just TV. You guys are so cool. So amazing. We'll be back for more next Tuesday. And then, of course, Connect with Carrie will be back next Saturday evening as well. Um, have a great week, everyone. Thank you again so very much for tuning in. We'll see you soon. <laughs>